Hi friends, uh, this is Niladri. This particular video is to demonstrate how you'll be able to use your capacity planner, the Excel template that is available under Agile Digest. Let's first focus on how you'll be able to work on. There will be two different uh, template. One is for two-week sprint, another is for three-week sprint. The demonstration that I'm doing currently with the three-week sprint. And this is after the definition of your capacity, it will be looks like this. Let's start with uh, all the slides that we have and how we'll be working on that. The very first one after download, you can spend some time to go to the readme and go through what exactly each slide is talking about. Once you are done, there, this is a video URL uh, link, you will be having it here. And uh, the change request, if you have anything you want to change based on uh, the default settings of this particular template, you can drop us a mail. This is uh, the definition sheet and within these sheets, you will be defining all your capacity, team structure, allocation, sprint start date, end date, vacations, company holidays, anything you will be defining it here. So let's go through one by one. What exactly is this? Whatever the values currently you are seeing, those are just for sample. So once you will starting it, you will be cleaning everything. So let's assume I'm starting it for the first time. And this is after download, I'll be able to see this right now. So what I'll be doing is first thing I'll be clean it off and you can keep it as a reference point how to enter the values. I will be cleaning everything here and I'll be cleaning everything here as well. I don't have any holidays as of now, let's say, and I'm cleaning it. So now this is a blank sheets apart from this team member. Those are also some default values. You need to add your team members and their roles and their allocations. The first area you will be adding it, what's the name of the team, for which team you are doing the capacity planning and what's the focus factor. I hope you already know what exactly the focus factor is. If not, please refer the another video of understanding capacity planning. And the focus factor is how much percentage you are focusing for your capacity. Most of the team uh, does that 85% or 90%, but few teams, they still think they have covered most of all the ceremonies and times they will be putting in and they are giving a 100% of capacity. This focus factor actually says even if you are saying you are working on this much of capacity but out of that capacity you may not be able to fully devote to only that sprint development or sprint activity. You may be doing something out of uh, the sprint activities as well. So based on that, you can define how many percentage you will be working on this sprint development. Now uh, the sprint name. So this will be each sprint will be having a different name. For an example, sprint one, sprint two, sprint three, sprint four, and so on. The duration of the sprint, this is actually locked. You will be not able to change it. So this is a third week sprint. So if you want to go for a two week sprint, there is another template. So there are two templates for two week and three week template. Now the start date, when your sprint is starting and based on the, this date, end date will be defined and the working hours uh, per day. It's nine hours as of now for this template, you can change it to eight hours as well. Now this is the area, it's actually auto generated based on the start date and end date. And this gray area is talking about those are the weekends. If you start it for an example, instead of 24th, you want to start it on 19th. Now you can see 19th is a Wednesday, your weekend is coming here and this will automatically change based on whatever your start date and end date is. This end date is now changed to 8th Jan because it's a 3 week sprint and starting on 19th ending on 8th of Jan. Working hours, 8 hours that I, we already talked about. Now within this date range of your sprint, is there any company holiday or any off holiday that is applicable to the entire team? I guess yes, this 25th of December is uh, Christmas Day and many companies give 1st of Jan as a new year off also. So you can add all your company holidays here. So I'll select 25th of December. So th there is a drop down, it will come only those dates only. And you actually for reference, you can give uh, why it is off. And secondly, I can add one more day that's uh, 1st of Jan that I can actually select it from here and say new year. Now uh, 
you can define your team member these all activity you need to do it for the one time activities when you are doing it for the first sprint and next sprint onward you just need to change these dates over here and this section i'll talk about later now you can define all your team members one by one and their role if you think uh, you have more than nine team members then you can drop me a mail for a change if you have less than nine team members you can actually delete it from here so for this example i'm just let's assume we have a eight member team and i'm deleting this one so now we have only eight members and these are the members you can change it the name and the role anything you wants to add and their allocation to their project so let's assume this person have 25 percent for an example now this section is talk about if anyone have a planned uh, half day off or full day off that you can define here so if you make it type w here or keep it blank it means a full working day if you mark f or full off it will be show you as a red if you show someone as h you can actually type in also so i'm saying these are the person who will be half day off and these are the person who will be full day off so this is what i have defined who will be taking off on what day based on that it will be taking uh, the vacations now there are some times you spend on attending your ceremonies like daily scrum calls sprint planning sprint review sprint retrospective so how we'll be doing it so for once you have set up your start date and end date you already saw what is the weekend is coming so you can actually simply select all the dates that you will be putting time for so for an example let me say i will be spending 15 minutes every day for daily scrum call so here all entries will be on 15 now sprint planning i usually do at the first day of the sprint so 120 minutes here sprint review last day of the sprint that is here uh, let's assume 60 minutes and 60 minutes and grooming i have actually scheduled every thursday and every tuesday and thursday so all tuesday and thursday i'll be doing grooming to mature up my backlog and except the last date if it is a tuesday and I'll be saying how much time I spend is 60 minutes. Based on that, it's calculate how many time you will be spending on this sprint on ceremonies and total how many hours is coming up to that. Now, again, if you want to add some meetings within your sprint duration, that is not your ceremonies, but you have to attend that and you will be spending some times. There are three uh, optional areas. You can add the meeting name and the times accordingly which date it will be happening now you are done with your definition let's see how your capacity is coming up based on this sprint duration and this uh, definition of your vacations and ceremony times we'll come to this analytics sheets little later so this is how it will be looks like now we'll see what exactly it's showing this red total full red is a company holidays if someone is here that's actually zero and this zero is the full day off if you see this person uh, amir on 8th of jan has a full day off so if you go into the definition sets this amir is a full day off but there was another full day of mark on 25th of this uh, spring 25th of december as 25th you already marked is as a company holiday it will not creating any additional impact so it's falling under it there was one more half day we had defined for uh, Akshay, that is a first of Chan, but again, that was a off. So it will again override by this uh, first of Chan New Year. Mara also has taken a half day off of on 28th. So if you look into see Mara's uh, allocation is 25% based on the total number of hours, two hours is per day she will be working on. So on our capacity, it will be showing one instead of two that's a 25 percent of eight hours so 25 percent is actually if you see half day every day 25 percent is two hours uh, if it is a half of that that means it's one we'll make one more half day and full day to see how it is getting impacted here so let's see i'm taking one half day for akshay over here and one full day for uh, mara or anyone else let's say, say dominic and i'll say full day here so these are the off they are taking if i go back to capacity i will see 
Dominic has a full day off here and Aksha has a half day off here. So that's how your capacity is planned. This is a read only seat. So you will not be able to make any change. If you want to get any changes here, you need to change on your definition seat. This is give you a final output and representation. Now the total hour is coming up this an effective capacity after ceremony time. So whatever the ceremony time you have calculated based on that it shows okay, this many times you will be having effective after calculating the ceremony time and the final capacity what you see that is uh, focus factor we are actually calculating this number with that 90 percent we had here so this 90 percent is actually calculating and giving you the focus fact, uh, final capacity there are two graphs here that uh, is coming from uh, the previous worksheets it shows on the role wise how the capacity is distributed and you can actually right click here and refresh it because pivot table needs to be refreshed and uh, it will be changing it accordingly. Now once your capacity is planned, now you know what's your capacity is and you will be going for a sprint planning. To do a sprint planning, you need to know how many capacity each one have with their role and what are the stories coming up. So there is another seat, so you will be having some sample data along with that. This data is there to make you understand once you are starting it, you will be clearing it off up to this area by just simply select and delete it will be all blank once you will be start filling it you will be see you will be entering some data and for an example i will just do a control z to get the data back and here each rows you are just entering the story points of the stories that you are committing and the task hours you are distributing within your team member here all these stories have some task associated and those tasks will be working by someone else the last column is does not create any problem if you enter any values here because we don't have the team member we already deleted the team member so it's not actually creating any impact on the team now I'll delete it and even if you delete it keep it doesn't matter but to keep it simple I always suggest to if the team member is not there delete it from your default value what you got at the time of download Mara is red because uh, I know total capacity available is 11 hours based on the allocation and she already committed 29 hours that is uh, more than what the capacity is and this graph is also showing uh, more than 100 percent and how much so you need to adjust by allocating this nine hours and talk with your team and give it to someone else it's still red then we may able to uh, find out okay this eight hours i will be removing it and we'll give it to whomever you see you can give it to them and again uh, you can actually talk let's say this is seven hours now it's good so whenever you will be seeing that someone is having more than whatever the capacity is is allocated or committed it will be turned as red to give you an input and this is uh, i mean again here this one is showing red and in this graph also it says how much over allocation is there so instead of 34 if you enter something like 70 hours this red portion will be again increased that's too much of over allocation if it is just let's say 30 it's very minimal 30 is actually not more if i make it 34 maybe it will hit a little more and this area is showing total uh, team capacity utilization so this is how you will be allocating your stories when you are committing during your sprint planning your task hours will come here along with the story ids and it will map up with your capacity what you have planned once your story is done you can actually do it this is an optional seats you can see how much they have committed total hours and how much they have actually spent to find out overestimation and underestimation capacity this is all about uh, how you'll be running your this particular uh, capacity planner and track with your uh, sprint planning if you still have further questions please drop us a mail at support at agile thank you very much for watching bye bye